Okay, so let's talk about the root of what happened here. And let's start at the very beginning. So you grew up in these same projects that this incident happened, right? Right. Um, your background, is is it Mexican? <laughs> no, African-American, if that's what they okay. want to call us. For, for some reason, Mexican showed up in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> you know how New York is. I mean, well, not usually Mexican. We usually a lot of dudes are mixed with Dominican or Puerto Rican and so forth. You know, and your name is, you know, your nickname is Poppy. So I, I figured there was some Spanish descent somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And growing up, your dad wasn't around, right? Oh, he would pop up here and there. He was a dope thing. Okay. And your mom had troubles as well. My mother wasn't on drugs. She was like. Dealing with a lot of sickness. Okay. And you had five brothers and sisters? Six from six of us all together from my mother. Okay. And you, know, you, you described your upbringing as dysfunctional. Very. Explain. I mean... I grew up, like... <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, being that my mother grew up in a dysfunctional home where her sisters was living with a child predator, her and her sisters had to go through the same thing I went through, which just trickled down. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's the family curse, but uh, her stepfather was an Africa Bambada. You know, he was the same type of person. So, you know, me growing up, I went through similar situations since I, I could go back to like the age of five, going through multiple different people molesting me before Africa Bambada. So before, okay, so how old were you when you first got molested? Probably about five, four, five years old, young. By, by who? Yeah, it started off with um, a female that my mother had babysitting me. Okay. You're five years old, man. That's a baby. <laughs> yeah, so, it, I was. I was. You I don't was even know. You don't even know how to read at five years old. I was molested by multiple people. It was. It was. It was a stair. You know, it was to just stair steps, and then Africa Bambada. He wasn't the first one. He was just oh. the oldest one and the one with the most influence over the, the the community. He was a pillar. Okay, so leading up to Bambada. Was it, you know, you mentioned it was a female. Was it females and males or just females before that? Females and one male. Okay. But see, the, the thing about it is with, 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 the, with the male that I went through the experience with, he was still a child himself. Okay. How old was he? About mm, maybe four or five years older than me. And you were how old? Uh, about six. Okay. All right. So, so you're going through all this, and then you meet Africa Bambada, who's the founder of the Zulu Nation, around age 13? 12. 12. Actually, I didn't meet him at, at, at 12 years old. I knew the man my whole life. Okay. Well, he would come by and... Yeah, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Uh -huh. So I would see him every single day of my life. So Planet Rock came out in 1982. And that was his biggest song. And, and that became, you know, kind of a staple in hip hop. I mean, it's gotten sampled hundreds of times and so forth. So by 89, he was already a hip hop superstar. He had already toured around the world and so forth. I would assume he wouldn't be living in the same place he grew up in. That's where you would assume wrong. Because you have to understand something. He's never left the hood, ever. He may have had, a like, for example, he had a house in Connecticut, but he's always kept himself, like, around the village where he was able to deal with all the children. Like, literally, you got the community center right there in the middle of Bronx River, and then you have the building that he was from, whether it was on um, 75, I mean, 95, or 16 or 9, because it was the both of them. And then, you know, back when I was going to high school, and, you know, Harry, Harry S. Truman, he also had an apartment over in Mark Terrace. So he 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 kept himself 
close where he was able to have kids come to his house. He's never left the hood. Okay. And the Zulu Nation, I mean, that was a very powerful entity in hip hop. Um, you know, apart from Africa Bambada, of course, I mean, Fat Joe, I think, is Zulu Nation. Um, Queen Latifah. Queen, Queen Latifah. Q-tip. I mean, Run DMC. Everybody. Um, Public Enemy. You know, I mean, I, I remember Night of the Living Bass Heads when Chuck D was like, here it is, bam. And then there's Africa Bambada in the music video. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, me being a hip hop head, I mean, I bought Planet Rock on 12 inch. Uh, you know, I, I remember the importance of Africa Bambada. I've even interviewed him a couple of times. And, and I, I remember, I think it was our second interview when. You know, I was doing a lot of interviews with Lord Jamar at the time, and he was talking about how, you know, from his point of view, homosexuality has no place in hip hop and so forth. And I, I brought that up to Bambada. This was before the accusations. And he had a very sort of uncomfortable answer. He kind of dodged the question. I, I saw that. Hey, that's you what saw he, that, right? Yeah, that's what he said, that little crazy nonsense out of his mouth. And I just laughed to myself, like, because I, I knew, I knew, I knew what he meant. I knew what I knew what his mind was at. Yeah. He just, for some reason, Ben will he will never come out of the closet because you know, first of all, he's he's part of he's he's part of, part of the Moorish um community, you know. So he, he, I don't see him ever coming out the closet admitting to who he is. Well, you got all type of people out there with all type of things, whether they be gay, straight, or whatever's out there, and they do they different style or whatever they doing on the planet. So. You don't know what styles of hip hop or what people are doing. Whatever they do behind a closed door, that's to each and all of them. So I couldn't say what that is. That's just saying like that ain't got nothing to do with Christianity, Islam, or, or Judaism. Ain't got nothing to do with whatever politician or whatever's happening out there. So we cannot say who's what and who's what. Okay. I mean, as, the, as one of the founders of hip hop, do you see it like an outwardly gay rapper? coming out and being accepted by the hip-hop community? I couldn't even say. You have to look online to all that to see which, who's a gay rapper, who said that they a gay rapper, and, and out there rapping whatever they rapping to. Right. Like I said, at the time, there was no accusation. So this was just a random question to a hip-hop guy that I was interviewing. Like, there was no, I didn't have any, you know, background info or anything else like that. But I do remember his answer was a little bit odd, you know? 